Welcome to this video demonstrating the surgical technique for applying the lateral ankle fix plate for ankle arthrodesis. The indications for using this plate are for fusion of the ankle as follows. Tibia Taylor osteoarthrosis, Tibia Taylor osteoarthrosis with deformity, Tibia Taylor osteoarthrosis in the presence of osteoporosis. The contraindications for use of this plate are active infection and the plate should be used judiciously in the presence of suspected infection. The ankle fix plate can be considered in cases of Charcot arthropathy but it is recommended that the plate is not used in isolation but as an integral part of and in combination with additional robust fixation techniques. The lateral ankle fix plate can be used in many ways. Firstly, it can be used as a neutralization device in conjunction with out-of-plane lagged screws. Secondly, it can be used in various tibia Taylor osteoarthrosis after application of an axial home run screw whereby supplementary compression is required through the lateral plate using the external compression device. Thirdly, it can be used for ankle arthrodesis in various osteoarthrosis on its own by applying compression of the prepared surfaces using an external compression device. In cases of valgus osteoarthrosis of the ankle, care should be used to achieve good compression through supplementary screw fixation and the external compressor should not be employed. In order to safely complete this procedure, fluoroscopy is mandatory. Use of a thigh tourniquet permits a bloodless operative field. A narrow bladed saw aids the fibular osteotomy and instruments such as distractors, chisels and osteotomes are recommended. Small acetabular reamers and a bone mill aid in morselizing the fibula for intended grafting. Any supplementary screw fixation such as home run screws should be considered at the surgeon's discretion. Patient positioning is at the discretion of the surgeon in a supine position, it is recommended that a sandbag is placed under the ipsilateral buttock to aid access to the lateral hind foot. In cases where the surgeon is operating alone, the procedure is straightforward if the surgeon stands and the patient lies in a full lateral position. The key structures at risk are the superficial perineal nerve, the sural nerve, and with resection of the distal fibula, the branch of the perineal artery supplying the muscle belly of flexor hallucis longus. In a supine position, this is the preferred skin incision with an anterior curve distally at the surgeon's discretion. With sharp division in layers using hemostasis, the fibula is exposed, taking care to avoid injuring the superficial perineal nerve. Staying close to the fibula, it is then skeletalized to expose the distal 7 cm of its length. Two trithouan retractors are placed either side of the proximal extent of the exposed fibula at the intended site of osteotomy. A chamfered saw cut can then be made to osteotomize the fibula. A chamfered bone cut is recommended to lessen the prominence of the fibula stump postoperatively. Once the fibula has been resected, careful hemostasis should be performed to make sure that the branch of the perineal artery to flexor hallucis longus is controlled. If the intention is to utilize a home run screw, sticking close to the posterior malleolus, the soft tissues can be elevated to allow access to the posterior surface of the distal tibia. Dissection then proceeds anteriorly to allow removal of anterior osteophytes often present in tibia Taylor osteoarthrosis. These should be removed when attempting to correct an equinus deformity. Any large osteophytes on the lateral process of the talus should be excised to leave a flat surface. These osteophytes are particularly common in various osteoarthrosis. In this case, the technique for preparation of the ankle joint is by applying distraction across the joint. 
This allows easy access to denude the articular surfaces of remaining cartilage and to expose subchondral bone. A guide wire is then placed from the posterior malleolus to travel along the axis of the neck of the talus as a wire for positioning the so-called home run screw. In large individuals, an accessory stab incision, as indicated by the red oval, can allow easier introduction of the guide wire. Confirm the wire position on fluoroscopy in two planes. After measuring and drilling, the home run screw is inserted to compress the joint. Fluoroscopy should be used to check the position of the screw. Clinically, check the position of the arthrodesis. The ankle fixed plate consists of two distinct regions. The short tailor component contains four screw holes separated from the tibial component by a clear ridge on the plate. This ridge should lie at the level of the intended site of arthrodesis. In order for it to sit overlying the lateral talus, it may be necessary to remove osteophytes from the lateral talar process. Additionally, in order for the plate to sit well on the tibia, removal of some of the tibial bone forming the incisura may be necessary. The plate can then be temporarily secured to the ankle using K-wires. Using drill sleeves marked with the black strips, the sleeves are locked into the tailor component first. Using the black drill, preparations are made to place the screws into the talus. Owing to the non-anatomic nature of the plate, the first screw may not snugly engage and lock into the plate, especially if there is some residual movement in the plate after temporary fixation. The external compression device consists of a gunmetal sleeve and a metallic inner barrel with a gauge etched on it. The inner barrel moves freely inside the sleeve by turning the bolt on the end of the compressor. This barrel has a sleeve attached to it that accepts a 5mm chance pin from the ankle fixed tray. The compressor should be zeroed so that the chance pin sleeve will lie in the proximal extent of the long oval hole in the plate. The compressor is then applied to the plate using the locking drill sleeves with the red markings on them. There. Can you see that? So in other words, I'm trying to show the drill guide is all the way down. Mm -hmm. And then we'll slide this in. The compressor should be pushed as close to the patient so as to gain as much mechanical advantage in applying the compression. Only then can a 5mm chance pin be applied through the barrel sleeve. This has best purchase when passed through both cortices of the tibia. By turning the side bolt, compression is applied. The degree of compression is gauged by feel and surgical discretion. Screws are applied to the plate through accessible and vacant screw holes to maintain the compression before removing the external compressor. Once this has been achieved, the external compression device is released by undoing the side bolt. Final screws can be introduced using the red drill sleeves and drill bit.
Yeah, okay. Just fill it in yeah. when we want yeah. it. Yeah. So you can't just sort of provisionally fix it, K-wires and stuff like that, because that's the type of stuff that we'll get after. So. What, we, what we think we may change would be... Final fluoroscopic images are taken to check the fixation and make sure that no screws lie within the subtalar joint. Closure proceeds as guided by the operating surgeon. We recommend resting the operated area in plaster of Paris back slabs until the wounds are clean and dry. Weight bearing can be commenced dependent upon surgeon preference and the stability of the arthrodized ankle joint. In summary, this video covers the indications for the procedure, the incision and the important structures at risk during the procedure. We cover the recommended technique of joint preparation, the insertion of a home run screw, followed by the application of the lateral plate. We also cover how to use the external compressor.